Jane Austen, created, directed, and presented by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. In this video, Dr. Mullen will overview Jane Austen's birth chart and her progress chart through the life force. In reading a birth chart, interesting celebrities are a really good technique. And this is astrologer Dickie Joe Mullen in Orlando, Florida, with an example of how to interpret a birth chart. And, oh, I've selected one of my favorite authors, Jane Austen, from staid Regency England to the 21st century's million-dollar babe of the hour. Jane is everywhere. That's an actual sentence, a statement that was uttered with an absolute mood of joyfulness by a teenage client I saw recently. She came to me at my office here in Orlando for a horoscope and tarot reading. The session was a gift from her parents in honor of her about to finish high school. However, she wanted to go in an unusual direction with her reading. This high schooler um, brought out a deck of new tarot cards, the Jane Austen Tarot, and I bought my own deck um, after she left because I was so intrigued with it, and shyly requested that I use that deck for her portion of the reading that was involved with the tarot. She then asked whether I knew if her horoscope was at all like that of her favorite author's birth chart. Now fortunately, on a hunch, having heard that my young client was so devoted to her Jane Austen blog, which she writes in nearly every day, I had prepared a copy of the brilliant 19th century novelist's natal chart. And as we um, spent the remainder of the hour discussing it, I was moved by this teenager's genuine devotion to and deep knowledge about Jane Austen, the poor clergyman's daughter who had lived a very brief life so long ago. Jane Austen was a Sagittarian. She was born December 16th of 1775, just minutes before midnight according to a family source. So we have a birth time for her at a rectory in the tiny village of Steventon, Hampshire, near Basingstoke, England. Jane's ascendant or rising sign is about 24 degrees of Virgo, and this gives her Neptune at 24 degrees Virgo exactly rising at birth. Jane's son was 24 degrees Sagittarius, exactly square Neptune, the planet of imagination and illusion, and her writing is incredibly imaginative and clever, with a touch of the cynical and sarcastic. The strongly aspected Sagittarius son's influence um, is recognized in Jane's biting social commentary and irony and the stunning command of the use of free speech which characterizes her works. The sun also links to vitality and the life force, and Jane's health was very fragile. Her rather short lifespan can be seen in the solar placements, the sun is the life force, afflicting the Virgo placements in her first house. The sixth house of health has Pisces on the cusp, and it's ruled by that afflicted Neptune square her sun. Jane also has Mars Pluto conjunction at 19 to 25 Capricorn, a small orb of 6 degrees, and that important and powerful conjunction trines the Virgo planets. The Mars Pluto conjunction, um, also Mars Neptune conjunction, has been called the aspect of the magician, even an aspect of bewitchment. Those born with either of those conjunctions, Mars conjunct Pluto or Mars conjunct Neptune, and Jane again had the Mars-Pluto Mars conjunction, are often influential and powerful people. Um, Princess Diana and President Clinton were two examples of people from the recent past in the news that had this conjunction. 
Mercury, the ruler of Jane's Virgo ascendant, is accidentally dignified in the third house. Now, a planet is accidentally dignified when it's in the house of the sign it rules. Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac, so a third house Mercury is said to be dignified, accidentally dignified, and her Mercury opposes Uranus in Gemini in the ninth house. Mercury in Sagittarius is also in mutual reception with her Jupiter in Gemini in the ninth house. Mutual receptions are when planets are in each other's ruling signs. They're excellent. They, first of all, allow us to get out of whatever we might get into. And then secondly, um, the mutual receptions give two placements, two Jupiters and two Mercuries to interpret here. This places um, Jane's Jupiter in Gemini back into the third house of her own ruling signs and her siblings, the third house among other things rules brothers and sisters, were always very close to her. The third and the ninth houses relate to communication and her intellect, ability to publish, and interest in philosophy and religion are all shown here. Astrologically, the secret to understanding the source of Jane's genius lies in studying the exceptional mutual reception pattern and influences of the planets in her third and ninth houses. Cadent houses relate to the future. Um, in the zodiac, we have groupings of cardinal um, houses and cadent and succeedent and the cadent are the most subtle, and Jane's cadent houses are very strongly accented. She was a celebrated novelist, she asked in her own lifetime. Her writings, though, are enduring in appeal, and actually they've become more and more popular over the years. They have some sort of important message for the future, because in just this first decade or so of the 21st century, movie ticket and book sales have reached, reached the $100 million mark for Jane's novels. Jane Austen book clubs meet around the world to discuss and appreciate her works. The mysterious and fateful twists, all involving love and relationships, are a prominent theme in the Austin books. Now, Jane had her natal Venus in Scorpio, and this can explain her fascination in exploring deep and subtle passions. Uh, by all accounts, Jane was extremely likable and charming. She is said to have never hurt a friend or relative with her writing or her spoken words. She was born with her moon at 14 degrees of Libra, and that's trine for Jupiter in Gemini, and it is at a wide, favorable sextile aspect to her Sagittarius sun. All of this shows a refined and considerate person, adept at social skills. The moon is also in a close conjunction with Saturn, though, and this can be an aspect of depression and loneliness. The moon-Saturn conjunction in the natal chart is one of the more difficult patterns to find, and she was a lifelong spinster. Um, the moon-Saturn conjunction at 19 degrees of Libra, the sign of marriage, squares her Mars. And Saturn, which delays and denies, rules her fifth house of romance. So this pattern shows her disappointing personal attachments. In the early 1796, at about age 20, Jane reputedly had a brief and tragic romance. Considered an attractive woman, she waited patiently for an ideal and respectful love. She met Tom Lefroy, a handsome Irishman, while on a family seaside outing. After jolting Jane, the charming Lefroy later became a Lord 
High Justice, that's like a Supreme Court Justice in Ireland, Jane apparently never recovered from this early disappointment in love. At the time this personal tragedy and love denied is a tragedy took place, transit Neptune, the planet of illusion, confusion, deception, was in Scorpio, making a once-in-a-lifetime transit over her natal Venus. At the same time, Uranus, the planet which rules sudden meetings and partings, was in early Virgo, um, going near her ascendant and moving into square, her natal Uranus and her natal Mercury in Gemini and Sagittarius, respectively. While she remained a spinster who lived all of her life with her family, there's nothing plain Jane about Jane Austen. Her strong fourth house shows exceptional family ties, and the family life was a happy one. Describing each other as best friends, a nephew wrote a biography of his famous aunt, preserving many of the details of Jane's early life for posterity. This biography tells that Jane had an exceptionally good education for that time period, and in 1783, um, which she was in a school that lasted through 1786, she attended educational um, institutions in Oxford, Southampton, and Reading, England, during those years. Neptune was in Libra then, conjoining her natal Libra placements. Transit Saturn in Capricorn conjoined her natal Capricorn planets and was trying her Virgo ascendant in 1789 when she began her first novel. She was only 14 years old, and she also had a lifelong habit of letter writing. Her exceptionally clear and descriptive letters were cherished by her many correspondents, friends and family alike. Transit Uranus in early Leo was trying her natal Mercury in 1789. Transiting Pluto in Aquarius was trying both her natal Libra and Gemini planets. This showed she enjoyed successes almost immediately with her writing. It was in 1811, though, that her celebrity status was established with the publication of Sense and Sensibility, which became an immediate bestseller. Her third Jupiter return in Gemini in 1811 was supported by transits in Sagittarius. Now remember, Jupiter rules the sun sign of Sagittarius, and it favorably aspected both her Saturn and Neptune. At that time, transit Uranus in Scorpio was near her natal Venus in her second house. Financial security as well as recognition came, and the rewards of years of hard work and modest living circumstances were rewarded with very comfortable success and the resolution of early financial problems. The six years following this astrological pattern were the peak of Jane's productivity in her lifetime. Um, from 1811 almost until her passing, she died in 1817 at age 41, July 18th of 1817. And historians state that kidney failure was probably the cause of her death. Um, although Anne Jane always had devoted followers, um, the recent past 12 year or so period has marked a major revival of interest. It actually began in about 1995 when Sense and Sensibility is released as a film starring Emma Thompson and the award-winning screenplay um, came into play when Transit Pluto was in Sagittarius, again activating her Mercury and her Sun in her natal chart. During the summer of 2007, both Jupiter and Pluto were near Jane's natal sun in Sagittarius. Now she had passed away, of course, more than a hundred years before, but in the chart of a famous person who still continues to influence, the birth chart will show um, how, say, those effects are going um, into play. An example is how 
King Richard III, who died in the 1400s, was recently unearthed in England, and his skeletal remains were found. There was a lot of publicity in recent times, and he was reinterred, and his natal birth chart showed all of that. Making that germane to Jane, she was the Paris Hilton of the early 19th century, and a very hot inventor chick. Her other major novels are now bestsellers, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Persuasion, Mansfield Park, as well as Sense and Sensibility. They're among the popular icons of contemporary culture. Um, she wrote during peaceful intervals of a domestic time that was busy and happy, the time of the American and French revolutions and changing politics and mores were coming into play. The Industrial Revolution was yet to come, and new editions of her classic books and a variety of film versions have made the Jane Austen revival a true phenomenon. On a recent vacation to England, of course, I had to make a pilgrimage to the steady stream of devoted places where the Janeite fans go, and one of them was Jane's gravesite in Winchester Cathedral. And near Jane's final resting place, which is marked by a large plaque, the atmosphere of the cathedral had a light, happy quality, and I, I was pleased to eavesdrop on a cheerful discussion about her books, shared, shared um, by men and women of all ages from different parts of the world, who had gathered there just on a regular day uh, to pay homage to the bright and enigmatic personage of Jane Austen. This was originally developed um, to surprise my client for her first reading, and I hope you've enjoyed this peek at how a birth chart is interpreted and how the transits at different times can affect a life. This is astrologer Dickie Jo Mullen in Orlando, Florida, and a Janeite, devoted Jane Austen fan, oh, and a former English major from the University of Florida.